All right, what's up everyone? So today we are building our Chevy 350. So we picked this up off a of buddy uh, that was from uh, the 60s, like a Malibu or something like that, but it had low miles and it's a good running motor. So they ran it on the dyno and all that, but we want to do a couple little things to it before we go putting in our Jeep. So what we're going to do with this motor here, oop, back it up, oop. So what we're going to do with this motor is we got a new cam for it, put a new cam in, we got a new valve spring, seals, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we got a new gear drive that we're going to put instead of a double roller timing chain, which will be very controversial uh, to a lot of people, but we want to do it. So it's going to be a quiet gear drive, not a, not a noisy one, because we don't want too much racket coming from it. We plan on an air gap uh, Allobrock intake, and we are going to mix it with a Holley, uh, 600 carbon tuner so that'll be a good setup for this engine and we're also gonna put an MSD ignition system on this thing and our buddy will hopefully help us out with making our wires uh, since uh, he made them for our last one and it looked really clean and good so we are gonna leave the stock heads on this we got some roller rocker tips for it though uh, probably leave the good old stock uh, steel uh, valve covers we got a nice blue we're gonna freshen everything up we definitely got to clean it up a little bit better, but we got to break down the oil pan, all that stuff. Just get this thing down to ground zero and then build it up. Uh, obviously, we're going to leave the crank, pistons, all that low. The bottom end part is going to be left alone, you know, and uh, and all that. So we're going to break it down, clean her up, get her painted, start sliding our fresh cam in and all that good stuff. So we're going to get at this video, guys. All right. But so far we got the engine broke down this far. Uh, we're leaving the pan on there right now just so we can get everything a good clean scrub and all that. Uh, there's still some residue and oil and all that. So it would be a lot easier. The pan's still on. Probably clean it. And then we'll take it off. And we got to put something down too because when we tilt this over, even though we drained all the oil out, it's still going to dump more fluid out. Uh, just because when we cleaned this thing originally, there was more oil on it. We power washed it. So that's why I just sprayed WD-40 in all the cylinders here. Just so if there was any moisture, it doesn't start rusting over time just sitting. And uh, yeah, we're going to get these cleaned up a little bit better. But honestly, I think everything looks pretty good so far. All right, guys, we're back in the garage. And we've been doing some work without you guys. So we got started getting some stuff painted. And we got the old uh, oil pan, balancer, timing cover, some valve covers. Got that going. Just got that guy uh, cleaned up over there. We're getting ready to break the springs down and get that stuff all swapped out we don't know what we're doing yet we might we might send them have the the heads redecked and maybe uh maybe have the, them ported out a little bit i don't know we're gonna get some pricing tomorrow see if it's actually worth it or not last time we did it, it took like six months and we're kind of uh we're kind of screwed on the whole ordeal guy did excellent work it just wasn't really worth uh us waiting that long and how much we spent we could have probably just 
went and bought new heads. So this GoPro probably just saved you guys about five minutes of your life because it did not work when I was recording. You know what? That's my own little complaint about GoPros. So sometimes they don't work. So pretty much what I just showed you guys was how to leak test your valves. But if you go down to my videos, I actually have another way or another video just for leak testing valves and showing you how to do it. But pretty much all you do is you take a rubber grommet hop, uh, hammer, you slap all these bad boys here, just so you make sure the valves are seated. And then you can use water, whatever you want for really liquid. You can pop open a can of Pepsi if you want and uh, fill up all your valves. And then uh, you pretty much wait and see if you see them leaking. And I'll show you. Real. Yeah. So pretty much you just make see if they're leaking through here at all. And if they're not, then you're good. And if they are, you're not. So thankfully most of our valves are good. We had one exhaust valve that was leaking a little bit, but with the build up here and all that and the age of these heads, that's not really anything surprising. Ooh, we're falling apart. Um that's all gonna be uh, done as far as when we relap our valves and all that. Get everything cleaned up. Not a big deal. We got the race going right now. And we'll clean our oil pan up. Finishing up the last couple things we got to clean up on this motor. And we're gonna start getting at it, putting it together. Got some of our hot rod parts. Gonna be good. All right, guys. We're getting ready to install the cam here. We just got some good old Permatex engine assembly lube. It's really important when you guys are installing new camshafts, lifters, rocker arms, all that good stuff. We're, gonna, we're just going to get it set in that first one right there. Alright, so we're in. And we're just going to make sure. That we put it on this whole thing really thick oil and the purpose is during your build of the motor it's not going to run off it's going to stay on there so when you do startup it uh stays you know you don't have a dry startup pretty much oh yeah yummy all right we're ready to sink the rest of her in I like to say, just don't, don't force it. That is in. And at this point, we're going to look, but there should be a marker on how we're supposed to set this. And uh, actually, you know what? It's, it's set through our, our, our timing gear. We'll zip our timing gear on there, and it'll be the same thing as far as the dots aligned and all that. So, camshaft is in. And we're not going to soak our lifters yet because um, we're not going to put those in until we're ready to button up the motor. We already got one of our heads lapped here. To show you guys looking pretty crisp. So we got all these looking pretty darn good. Haven't put our springs in yet. We're coming over here. Getting these heads done now. We got our valves here. They've been soaking gonna get at this and we gotta do our uh, lapping of the valves here and uh, get this dialed in and then probably clean this surface one more time so boys out here gonna give us a hand but let's get at it
so we moved on to the heads and we we're starting to put them back together we got our one head done we made one little small little side video on this because we ran into some uh, difficulties as far as how they were to be assembled since this was our first time but that's the other video if you guys want to watch that so what I'm going to show you is us installing one of these springs because it's all the same and then we'll carry on to the next thing all right guys I think I got you set up at a halfway decent angle there so pretty much first thing we're going to do is just put a couple drops of oil in here you're going to use motor oil something thin we're going to take our valve make sure she doesn't have any debris on her I'm going to slide her through, just rotate it, make sure you get that all lubed up in there good. Slide that through. Now you're going to take your umbrella seal, put that bad boy on just like that, and you're going to want to push the bottom of the valve up all the way, and then that'll actually hold it for the time being. And then we're going to get our spring. We'll get this bad boy right here put that thing on and then make sure the spring sets in there good get our spring compressor and it does get a little hairy so we usually I sink it down to about the first notch because what we're going to do is we're going to take our little rubber seal here this guy I'm gonna just double check make sure you guys are getting this in camera view you guys are fantastic and uh, pretty much on your valve here you have two notches and you gotta get the rubber spring on or pff, the rubber spring the rubber seal on the bottom one here so definitely want to not put your fingers on here as much as you can and then we're gonna oop, that's not it oh here she is take your little flathead and uh, we're gonna move our light oop, there we go then, perfect might be a little bright for you guys but it's perfect lighting for me and depending on how your spring is you might be at a little bit of an angle you just give a little pressure there we go once you hit that bottom groove I usually just could tap on that seal and if it doesn't push down you know you're you're set on there and maybe just give it a little wiggle but she should be pretty pretty good and yes I have LED lights and all that but I tell you what I don't know some about little old school light here nice little warmth from the bulb ain't a bad thing so we're just making just double checking here we are on there 100 percent just wanted to make sure you don't want that seal coming uh, coming off so that's what's going to keep oil it's one of the things that's going to keep oil out of your uh, cylinder all right take our old valve locks here put those in there i try to put them uh since the head's angled that way I try to put them in sideways so one doesn't want to fall back all the time. And you might have to again give a little wiggle. Oop, not too much. Gotta watch the fingers. There we go. So now it fell in there. But we're not out of the clear yet. So now we're gonna start loosening. This guy, when it spins, is no bueno. If I did this all the time, it'd probably be a diff I'd get myself a way better tool, but this was a good budget tool. To get our feet wet on this. And I, I assume it's kind of important, but, or it's just, I like to keep these perfectly even, because there is going to be a little bit of a gap, and I'll show you here. Let me get it completely done. So usually you just gotta get right to that spot where it's about to seal completely up. 
and then uh, you're good. So that I like that right there. We'll release all the tension. Man, she really walked around on that one. I promise you guys, it really isn't that bad. There she is. See how I was talking about how I kind of like that to be a little bit even? Um, but yeah, that's us putting the valve spring on, getting our valve seated in here. We'll probably do a leak test. Uh, maybe we don't want to know the results, but we should probably do it regardless. Make sure that we did a good job uh, getting these things ready. And then we're going to paint them up and, uh, yeah, put them on. Show you guys a quick demonstration on how to tape off when you're painting. You put your masking tape on there. Let's go around. And it'll usually peel up pretty, pretty decent. Good enough for painting. Alright, that one was a little rough. We're gonna do a redo here. Let's do this one right here. Maybe a little bit better hits. Consistent. But that's how you tape it off. And then any other th holes where your bolts thread through, just take a piece of paper towel and stuff it in there, and you're good to go. All right, so we have definitely made some progress, for sure. As you can see, we got the heads on, we got the heads torqued on, and just to let you guys know when you're torquing your heads on, uh, look up because there is a special way to uh, to torque them on. And usually, most heads it starts with pretty much start at the center, and you're gonna work your way clockwise out. Anyways, our heads are torqued on, and. Uh, because of these holes here being exposed to some of the water ports and all that, we used a uh, thread sealant on here um, to get our ARP bolts tightened down and all that and as far as sealed up. And our next step here, we just put our, we soaked our, our lifters and we got them set in there now. And I was actually going to put the intake on and then I was looking, I was like, well, it'd be super easy to put our push rods in because we'll be able to see exactly as far as setting them in so gonna get this all set up here and then we're gonna get our gasket RTV all that good stuff get our intake set on we just got our valves adjusted and we got some of the comps cam it's pretty much pre-assembly lube but all we're doing is just brushing a little bit on trying to get in you know your kind of your uh, all your moving parts in there so that's why we're using a little toothbrush here get in there good so hopefully when she goes to fire up she's well lubricated as you can see we've gotten plenty of work done we got everything set up here as far as our heads the only thing we got to do is we had a choice between doing studs or just bolts for the valve covers I'm gonna do studs I think and we got our water neck on simple stuff got our water pump in get our water pump all set up uh, I believe these are these bolt holes go all the way through so we gotta make sure we put a sealant on that uh, because they're coolant holes or whatever and then we're not gonna put our MSD in just because and these are actually come out these are just in just blocks of holes but when we're putting the motor in we don't want to have our uh, our uh, distributor in and take the risk of uh, damaging it and this here our top um, not the right bolt so gonna have to find something just a smudge shorter just to firm that up or I guess we could maybe put a washer on there and maybe so it's it's right there it's so close you know what maybe that's what I'll do I'll just put a little washer on there and that'll be enough because it's so close guys I mean I mean that's tight and you can see that there's just only a smudge of gap we really only need just a little bit so that's maybe what we'll do but motor's looking good, looking, looking crisp, guys. Now we did make one mistake, so I'll show you guys. So, new KBS products coming your way, fresh video. But this guy right here goes on the front of your oil pan here, and there's two different sizes. And I didn't even notice that there was another one in there, and we installed all this, and then I'm like, 
I noticed this afterwards. I'm like, what the heck? So I started reading, and there's two different sizes. Well, I thought I measured it afterwards, and I was like, oh, okay, we're good, we're good. And honestly, I don't even have that much oil in there, but it started leaking. So that was a... Uh, that was no bueno for sure that was definitely a, a heartbreaker so I don't think it came from here and ran down it did it hmm no it wouldn't come from there we get the water pump on all that set up we got pulleys and all that but that stuff won't go on until the motor's set in. There's no point in putting that stuff on. Really, the water pump's kind of silly to put on too, but we're going to get it done. So just because it's easy, right here. So that's our Chevy 350 build. We threw that distributor in there just so you can see a little bit what's going to be happening. But pretty much, long story short, we'll have our little wire connectors going here. We're going to do custom wires. There'll be nice black wires coming over the valve covers here, which will... Why we're not going aftermarket, because they're going to be hidden mostly anyways. We're going to have some nice clean wires riding on these things. So nice build. Supposed to be a nice stockish look. 350 motor and that's what we were going for one thing is the air gap obviously you could tell but other than that great looking little 350 block could produce a nice little horsepower probably somewhere around 300 325 nothing crazy good torque good motor good for off-roading so pretty pumped about this motor getting it going the only thing else left on this thing is pumping out the popping out the freeze plugs putting some fresh freeze plugs on that thing just to make sure she is ready to go. Other than that, guys, that's our 350 build. I appreciate you guys watching. And can't wait to show you guys some footage of sinking that motor in. But we got some prep work first. And we'll be showing you guys that too. So, until next time, we'll see you later.